In this video, we're going to take a look at Word 2013 Chapter 1 Skill-Based Training in My IT Lab. Now, if this is your first skill-based training, there's a couple things that are important to note. This is not actually Word and Windows 8 that are running. This is a simulator, so some things do work a little bit differently than you might normally expect. First thing we're going to do is we're going to scroll on over and we're going to launch Word 2013. Another thing to note as you're going through this is your screen may look a little bit different than mine depending on what type of screen you're working on. If you're working on a laptop screen, it might be a, a smaller screen resolution. If you're working on a, a large screen monitor, then maybe you'll see more on the screen at once. In fact, maybe even this panel here might be over on the right. So it all depends on the screen that you're working on. Now, as long as it's compatible with my IT lab, it should work. But keep in mind that the smaller the screen you have, the more likely you might be missing some stuff. Uh, so we're going to just launch a blank document in this first one. Double click. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the Insert tab, and we're going to insert some text from an existing file. So we'll go over here to uh, Object, and we're going to go to Text from File. And by doing this, it's going to take all of the text from one document and toss it into this one. We want the camps file, so we're going to insert that. And for all intents and purposes, we've basically made a copy of that document. And now we've just put that content in this new document. We're going to save it in the documents folder with this file name. Now, one thing that's important to know as you're getting started with Word is by clicking Save, it's going to save it wherever that file was already saved. If it's a brand new document, it's never been saved before, so clicking save is essentially the same as clicking save as. But, I will warn you that it's good to get in the habit of always using save as, because if you ever download a file off of the internet, it actually saves that document into your temporary internet files folder. If you continue to just click save and save it into that place, it's very hard to find where that document really is, so you really need to be careful of that as you go forward. Um, in the simulator, this doesn't really matter as much, but in actual Word, when you're working on your grader projects or, or any other homework assignments that you might have, it's going to be really important that you do a proper save as, so you know where your file is located. Anyway, we want to save this document in the Documents folder. Uh, and since this is a simulator, some things work a little different than normal Word. You can't double click on My Documents, you'll get an incorrect action for that. We actually need to click Browse, and it happens to put us in the Documents folder anyway. So we're going to type in W01H1 Refuge, and as long as you spell that right, and click Save, it should take. And the next thing we're going to do is close the document. Now, one thing you may uh, just do out of habit with most Windows apps is you might go to this corner and click on this X up here. Well, that would close your whole simulator, and you don't want to do that. So make sure for this one, when you're closing the document, you're only using this, because this is Word right here. We don't want to close the whole simulator down. So use that lower X. On this next step, we're going to go to the File tab, and we're going to start a new document. Go File, we're going to go to New, and we're going to search the online templates for Calendar. Cool thing about Word 2013 is there's all these online templates. If you want to create a document, there's probably somebody else who's already started to create a document like it, and you could build off of that template, that sample, if you will. So you could type calendar in here, or there's also a suggested search already here. You could just click on calendar. And what we want to do is we want to click on this first birthday and anniversary template. So you don't have to create any of the fancy formatting. It's already all here. It's a calendar, and it has all of the different months. And then you can just put in your data. Um, so if we want to use this, if we want to create a document with this, we just click create. Now that's all that we're going to do in this training with regards to the templates, but um, it is really neat if you want to quickly create a document of a certain type. You don't have to 
reinvent the wheel, so to speak. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to launch the uh, non-printing characters um, option. And sometimes you may see this in a document. You may not have known what it is because you notice there's all these paragraph markers that suddenly appear. And if you look closely, there's dots where all the spaces used to be. Now what this essentially does is it helps you see what Word sees behind the scenes. It helps you see where people have hit enter, where people have hit a space, and sometimes it's really hard to tell how many spaces you have between words. By doing this, you can see exactly how many spaces are between words or any special formatting that would otherwise be invisible to you. So by doing that, we're going to go down to um, the sentence that ends in finest. It's right here. And we're going to put the insertion point right after that question mark. And we're going to uh, just hit enter, a hard return. And when we do a hard return, we get this paragraph mark. By doing this paragraph mark, we're starting a new paragraph. And then things like spacing between lines is going to apply to us after a hard return. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to delete the space preceding the word swan. So right where we're already at, there's an extra space there. We're just going to hit the delete key and take away that. We're going to insert a hard return after the exclamation point after creek, right down here. Now you want to be careful here. You want to be after the exclamation point, but before that paragraph marker. And hit a hard return. And then we're going to type in explore nature. No caps, and you don't uh, need to do anything else with that. Just hit enter at the end, and it should accept that submission. Now what we're looking for in My IT Lab trainings is we're looking for the one thing that My IT Lab is looking for to indicate that we've successfully completed a step. So in that case, it was the enter key after typing in the correct text that lets My IT Lab know this was the correct solution. We're going to right click a misspelled word in this first paragraph, so we'll scroll down a little. And you can see this red underline, um, the word native is misspelled. You can right click on that word and see all of the different words that Microsoft Word thinks that you might have intended. And then you can click on the one that you want, which is native. Now we're going to go to the review tab and use a more traditional spelling and grammar check. And we'll click on this. And it's going to scan through the document and it's going to find any spelling and grammar errors. In this case, there's a, a section here. Um, we're looking for its. I think it's uh, in there somewhere. Um, anyway, what we're going to do here is, there it is. It's not improperly spelled, and you can see it's underlined in blue. That means grammatically it's not correct. IT apostrophe S isn't the correct its to use here. So we want to change that to without the apostrophe. And we've got a spelling error here. It's designed for children. So designed for children, we can change. And our spelling and grammar check is complete. We're going to go find the word immersed. It's actually from the top of the document. It's right here. And we're going to select that word. You can double click on it. Or you can left click and drag over the whole word. But we want to make sure it's selected. And we're going to display the definition. As long as we're under the Review tab, we can always click Define, and it'll instantly bring up a dictionary definition based on the Bing Dictionary. So this is our definition of Immersed, and when we're done with that, we're just going to close the dictionary pane. And we're going to use the thesaurus at this point to find a synonym for that word. Now, you can do this two ways. You can go up to thesaurus, or you can right-click on the word and choose synonyms and they're all right there. Um, but what we're actually looking for here is not going to exist in this section. There should be a little right arrow that we're after. So we're going to go to the, th the thesaurus option. We're going to go to absorbed, and you'll see this little right arrow on the right here. We'll click on that, and we're going to choose insert. And when we do that, that's actually going to change immersed to absorbed. 
Now we're going to go into some of the options in Word. These are some of the nice features that allow Word to act in certain ways. Now, it looks like we're going in to save our document. We're actually changing the options of Word for saving a document. So we'll go over here to the File menu, and what we really want is the Options section. And we're going to click on Save, and we're going to adjust the Auto Recover information. We want that to be every 15 minutes. Um, one thing you'll notice about this one that seems a little strange, but it is a simulator, so um, it just happens to be what my IT lab is picking up. The numeric keypad, if you happen to be using one, actually won't type in here. You're going to need to use the numbers at the top of your keyboard. And type that in and say OK. There's just a couple of little things like that where you might try using the numeric keypad and you need to use the numbers at the top or you hit the enter on the numeric keypad and really my IT lab is looking for the enter on the main keyboard section. You just need to be aware with of those kind of things as you're going through all of these different trainings. Um, it just takes a little troubleshooting. Just keep in mind there's a lot of ways to do things in all of these office products and this is one of those examples. We're going to go to the File tab, we're going to go back to Options again, and we're going to customize the ribbon. We're going to remove mailings, so maybe we don't want this, maybe we're not doing any uh, mail merges. We can just uncheck mailings, and mailings will go away. Likewise, if you wanted to create your own custom ribbon component, uh, your own custom tab, you can do that too, just new tab. Um, we're not doing that right now. What we're actually going to do is we're going to change the Review tab. So we'll highlight that one. And we want that to be renamed to Review Document. So this is kind of a gotcha. You can type in Review Document and say OK. Well, it's an incorrect action. Why? My IT lab requires you to be absolutely precise. Review Document is in caps. We need review document to be in caps. Even though, whoops, <laughs> precision again, make sure it's spelled exactly correct too. So even though none of these are capitalized, my IT lab is asking you to type in in caps. You must type in in caps for that to accept. And we'll say OK. And as that blips away, you'll see review document is now part of our, our ribbon. Here's another thing that's pretty neat about Word 2013. You can customize this quick access toolbar. It's this toolbar up here with the little tiny icons. You can include anything up there that you want too. So if there's something you use a lot like Print Preview and Print, uh, it gives you the ability to add that in really easily. You can just right click up here in some blank space, customize the quick access toolbar, and we want to choose the Print Preview and Print option and we're just going to click Add. Now, we could choose exactly where this is, whether it's before save, after save, at the end, at the front. doesn't really matter for my IT Lab simulator, but in Word, you can actually customize this to put these in any order that you want by using these up and down arrows as well. We're going to go to the Review tab, or I'm sorry, the Review Document tab that we modified, and we're going to add the spelling and grammar check to the quick access toolbar. All you need to do if you like something up here and you use it a lot, right click and add it to the quick access toolbar and it tosses it right up there for us. And now we're going to remove that print and the print preview and print option. You can simply right click on the one that you don't want anymore and remove it. It's very quick to modify these. And there's nothing up there that isn't somewhere else in your tabs anyway. So don't worry about removing something, it won't be gone forever. We're going to go to the Insert tab, and we're going to insert an unformatted footer. So you go under Footer here, and there's a couple of built-in ones, but we're not going to do any of these built-in types of footers. We're just going to say Edit Footer. It's completely unformatted, uh, completely generic at this time. And we're going to type in US Fish and Wildlife Service. 
notice the the period you gotta look real close the period down here is not in blue so don't type the period you want to type only the stuff that's in blue for these MyIT Lab trainings and then we'll press enter and we're gonna click on document info and we're gonna select the file name field so document info and we want file name and the cool thing about this is whatever your document is named that is automatically gonna go right here this becomes really nice when you're uh, trying to print out something and then you have this printout, this, this piece of paper and you want to know where that file was before you printed it you can toss in the file name you can toss in the file path where you opened it from or you can toss in any other types of information the title the author and you can really customize this exactly the way that you would want uh, we're gonna close the footer for now and we're gonna place the insertion point following through eighth graders in the second body paragraph okay so second body paragraph down here and we're gonna put the insertion point after the period but before that next space it needs to be exactly in that spot and we're gonna press, press spacebar and type in the series of wildlife camps no period on this one and don't hit enter anything like that once the text is typed in correctly my IT lab will kick over and uh, go on to the next step for you we're gonna go to the page layout tab and we're gonna change our margins I like this option uh, I like to save paper anytime I can so um, I like to make those margins narrow if I'm just working on a document just for me and by doing that suddenly we've decreased this gap here on the left right top and bottom of our document so we're getting more text per page now we're gonna go back to margins and we're gonna customize those because what we want now is we want a left and a right margin of one inch you can set these to be whatever you want just keep in mind that your printer can't print all the way right to the edge of the paper in most cases so uh, we're gonna change those back to one inch you don't need to put the, the quotation mark at the end for one inch just type the number one on both of those and say okay now we're gonna delete some extra stuff in our document. We're going to delete the paragraph beginning with Swan Creek National Wildlife Refuge. Keep in mind it's not talking about this one. We are talking about the paragraph here in the body of the document. So highlight the whole thing. Hit the delete key. Now we're going to delete these single line paragraphs as well in this area. We're just going to select all of these. Pay no mind to this thing getting in the way. And we're just gonna delete all of them we're gonna go to the page layout tab and we're gonna change this to be a landscape document sometimes you want it to print long ways sometimes you want it to print tall ways if we go to orientation we can very easily flip this over to a landscape document now we're gonna go to the view tab and we're gonna change the zoom to one page what this means is the entire page will fit on your screen well it's not exactly what you're seeing here but keep in mind that this part isn't really part of word in this case if you were using real word without um, without the extra my IT lab training stuff you would see the whole page and you'd be able to see the whole page as it would look when you print it out um, so that's what that option is all about we're gonna go back to portrait orientation under page layout we're gonna flip it back to portrait and we're gonna change the zoom back to 100 percent so we're gonna go back and change that zoom um, under view and we can just quickly say 100 percent there's a couple ways you can do this though you can use this slider down here this is also for zooming um, you can do a custom zoom by clicking on the zoom button and typing in exactly what you would want. So this is the 100% zoom. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the design tab. 
and we're going to insert a watermark. Now these are cool because it doesn't impact the text in your document but it does let you put a stamp on that document so if it's printed or saved off you'll always have this on top so that people can identify this as in this case a draft. So we're going to go to watermarks you'll notice there's confidential and do not copy we want draft one and it puts this big word right on the middle of our document so that nobody can mistake this as a final copy it's definitely a draft we're gonna customize this and we're gonna make this text red so under watermark we're gonna customize our watermark and we're gonna choose the color and we want a standard regular red now in my IT lab sometimes as you hover over these you will see the tooltip pop up telling you exactly what color it is other times it just doesn't appear don't get thrown off by that um, just select the one that it asks you for it wants the second column which is this one right here under the standard colors section which is plain old red we'll say OK next thing we'll do here is we're going to go to the insertion point after the word June in our document uh, on the second line of the second body paragraph here's June now what we want to do here is we're going to delete the space hit the delete key so June and 15 are right next to each other and what we're going to do is we're going to insert a non-breaking space basically what this means is we won't have June on one line and 15 on another. A non-breaking space means that if there's not enough room for all of June space 15, all of June space 15 is going to go to that next line. So this can be handy if you have uh, certain things you don't want to jump to that next line. So in this case, we're going to insert this non-breaking space. It's not a normal space bar space. We're going to go to insert, and we're going to go to symbol and it's going to be under more symbols and it's a special character so right here in this June 15 we want this special non-breaking space now maybe you do a lot of non-breaking spaces the more you do this the better you'll get and you'll know that control plus shift plus space will create a non-breaking space but as you're getting started with this and if you don't use them very much you're probably going to need to go in here for the special characters quite a bit. Now there's all kinds of cool stuff in here. Trademarks, copyrights, um, special type of hyphens and dashes. Um, so if there's ever a character that you don't have on your keyboard, you're going to be able to find it in here. So we're going to say insert. And that will insert that non-breaking space. Now there's a space here and you'll notice June didn't jump back up to that prior line it's going to always stay on the same line as 15 and we'll close that we're going to place the insertion point after the word striker right down here at the end of that second body paragraph and this is a trademark so we want to put that little TM sign under symbol fortunately for us this is a common one it's right here you can also go dig it up under the more symbols option but we can just choose this one here there's a shortcut key for that as well if you want to use it if you use it a lot and you'll find that in corporate official documents you need to display that TM as a trademark we're gonna place the insertion point at the beginning of the document it's actually already there but uh, if you're ever wondering if you are at the beginning of the document hold down control and hit home and it'll always jump you right to the beginning of the document uh, which is really handy you don't have to worry about am I at the beginning is there some other character there control home will always get you to the beginning and likewise control end will always get you to the end so we've got our insertion point right at the beginning of the document and we're going to insert a page break you can do this under the insert tab and you can choose a page break you can also do it under page layout um, you can create a break a page break here Sometimes my IT lab likes for you to go through the insert tab. Sometimes it likes you to go through the page layout tab. If one doesn't work, try the other. So we made our page break. 
we're going to go back to the beginning of the document again. I'm going to use my control home trick and I'm going to type director. And once you type that word incorrectly, the rest of the text auto completes. We're going to edit the footer here on this first page, scrolling down a little. You can double click in the footer and it'll open up that footer editing option. So if you're ever working on a footer or a header, just double click on it and it opens kind of like this little text editor just working in the footer. We're going to adjust this footer so it doesn't display on the first page. First pages are typically for titles, title pages, or in this case it's a letter. So we don't want this on our letter. We're going to have a different first page. And by that, we mean the footer that we originally had is not going to display on the first page. This one can have a completely custom footer. And we close our header and footer. Now we're going to go to the View tab. We're going to click on Zoom. And we're going to zoom this to precisely 125%. You can also do it with the slider here, but in this case, my IT lab really wants you to do this here, one, two, five, and say OK. Simply makes the page a little bit bigger. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to change our view back to 100. The shortcut for this is the button right here, but you could also do it through the zoom menu. And then we're going to place the insertion point at the beginning of the document. I'll do a control home for that and I'm going to click the File tab and preview the document as it will print. Under File, I'm going to go to Print, and this gives me the view of exactly how this document is going to print. And now I'm going to return to the Page Layout view by just going back using that button right there. It's not the Page Layout view exactly, um, because the Page Layout view is a tab, um, but it just gives us the normal text editing view back. Next thing we're going to do here is we're going to convert the document to a Word 2013 format. One thing you may notice as you open some documents is they may say compatibility mode here at the top. What that means is that there are some backwards compatibility pieces built into this document. It's capable of opening in some version prior than Word 2013. And there's pluses and minuses of that. Um, having backwards compatibility means more people can open your document with an older version of Word, but you're going to lose out on some of the newer features in Word. So for example, some of the cool new stuff in Word 2013 is intentionally disabled in this document so that people using older versions of Word won't have trouble. So do you want more compatibility or do you want more features? In this case, we're going to convert this document to be Word 2013. We'll just say Convert Document and we'll say OK. It's good to read over that stuff too while you're doing your training because it does give you those pros and cons. We're going to click on the File tab and now even though we've converted it we're going to look for compatibility with Word 2007 and Word 2010. So we can inspect the document, check it for issues, and in this case we want to check compatibility issues. We want to check compatibility for, specifically, only 2007 and 2010. I'm going to uncheck 97 and 2003. And I'll say OK. On this next step, we're going to go and modify some of Word's behavior and the options. We're going to go to File. We're going to open the Word options again. and we're going to click on the advanced section. All kinds of cool stuff in here that can customize the way that Word works. It doesn't always have to work the way that it does out of the box. We're going to go down to the save section, which is about, I don't know, three quarters of the way down the page. And we're going to say to always create backup copy. It's kind of nice in case there's file corruption or you need to roll back to a previous version or whatever. But that just gives uh, an example of one of the many, many, many things you can customize in the way Word behaves. Now we're going to click on the File tab, 
and we're going to use the document inspector. Back to this inspect document section, and we're going to inspect it for issues. And it's going to check out all of these different things. Some of these things we might like, some of these things we might not. We're going to inspect and we're going to see that it comes up with a couple of different issues. For example, there's custom XML data in this document. If we didn't intend it, maybe we should remove it. Um, there's headers, footers, and watermarks. It gives us an idea very quickly whether or not this is just a plain normal text document or if there's some special stuff in there. For example, in this case, we want to remove personal information. A lot of people don't recognize that when they create a new document in Word, the author, which is their username that they're logged onto the PC as, and potentially other pieces of information are going to be kept in that document. In this case, we want to remove them, and we're going to close. And then we're going to return to the document. That's going to strip away some of the custom um, attributes of that document. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go under file and we're going to print five copies of page two. This one I find works a little bit strange in my IT lab and um, it, it's a simulator thing. Um, not all of the possible combinations of how to do something can always be accounted for. So with this one, once you go into file print, you specifically want to type in two pages and with this one, don't type in the number five up here. Use the up arrow here to go all the way to five copies. We want five copies of page two. It still says print all pages. We don't want to switch to the current page or anything like that. Uh, the only way I found that this one will actually accept is doing it exactly this way. Pages, we want page number two. And copies, use the arrow keys to go up to five. And then you can click print. Any other options can cause you grief. If you do things out of that order, sometimes it'll cause you grief as well. So just make sure for some of these, you just have to do it exactly one way. And as you look through any of my other videos, you'll notice that I always try to show you the one way that works, even if maybe the most obvious way doesn't. Um, so there's always a way to solve all of these skill-based trainings don't want you to be banging your head against a wall trying and trying and trying to do something that you know works in Word or Excel when my IT lab is just really looking for a different solution at that time. We're going to go under the file tab. We're going to open the document properties. And in this case, we're actually going to open the panel. Now normally you can type a bunch of stuff in here, but we want to show the document panel because we want to type in some keywords here. We want wildlife, comma, space, camps. It needs to be exactly that, exactly there. And we're going to open the advanced properties. It's under document properties. We're going to go to the advanced ones. And we're going to click on the custom tab. Nice thing about this is, since we're 2013 is XML based, we can always add custom attributes to any of our documents. So whereas we m might normally have an author and a document title, we can also add in something like this, where we can select project, and that's actually going to be one of the attributes of the document, and it's going to be school information. Type it in exactly like that, and say OK. And now we have a brand new, completely custom uh, property for this document. And we'll close that document panel. And that completes Word Chapter 1 uh, for Word 2013 Skill-Based Training in My IT Lab.